An alternative earnings per share number that we often calculated is a diluted earnings per share number and this is also addressed in IAS 33. In distinguishing a basic earnings per share from a diluted earnings per share number, what it really comes down to is the numbers that we use in the calculation. What earnings number and what shares number. And the difference is that it reflects a different emphasis that we give to the number in the numbers. With the basic earnings per share number, we emphasize the present, and with the diluted earnings per share number, we probably focus more on the future and what the financial statements might look like in the future, having regard to transactions that we've already committed to. So let's get into diluted earnings per share numbers, and the best way of thinking about this is with a simple example. Here we have poor services. It has a profit from continuing operations of your ordinary shareholders of $10 million per year, and throughout the year, 50 million shares were on issue. In addition, it had a convertible note, and during that year that convertible note had interest paid of $2 million, and there were convert the convertible notes would convert into 15 million shares. Now the issue here is that that's going to change the earnings that we might use and the shares that we might use in the calculation of an earnings per share number. So what we have to do is we have to adjust the earnings number for what impact the exercise of the convertible notes would have. The interest is not going to be payable if we convert the notes, so therefore we're going to have $2 million less interest expense. Our earnings is going to go up by $2 million. The number of shares that we have on issue is going to go up by $15 million. And so to calculate our diluted earnings per share number, we're going to have adjusted earnings of $12 million and adjusted number of shares of $65 million, sorry, $65 million. And that's going to give us a diluted earnings per share number of 1.84. And you can see that this is less than the 0.2 that we had when that was our basic earnings per share number. And you can see how this is a diluted security. What about options? Options may also dilute the earnings per share number. And a simple way of thinking about this is with an example. And here we have poor services. It's issued 100 options for shares exercisable at $15. It has 500 shares on issue, and they're currently valued at $20 per share. The first thing we need to think, recognize is that the options contain an element of shares which are going to be paid for, and a dilutive component. To the extent that the options are paid for, to the extent of $15, and to the extent that this is less than the current stock price of $20, you could say that there is a dilutive effect of the options of $5, 20 minus 15, in relation to the total value of the, op the shares being issued, $20. So the options adjustment is 0.25. What we're saying here really is that the options have a paid for, the shares coming from the options have two components, a paid for component, which isn't dilutive, and a unpaid component, which is dilutive. And the unpaid paid component is 25% of the option value, the share value. So to calculate the weighted average number of shares on issue, we have 500 shares normally for 365 days, 500. We have 100 options. The adjustment factor is 0.25, so what we're saying is that the options represent the issue of 25 shares which aren't paid for. So that's 25. So that gives us a weighted average number of shares of 525 shares. If you're a little bit puzzled about the what's going on with the options, can I suggest that maybe a good way of getting your head around this is to think about two relatively extreme examples. Think about what the impact of having uh, options with an exercise price of zero would be. In that case, the adjustment factor would be one and the options would be fully dilutive. Or alternatively, think about how it will be the case if the options were exercisable at the current stock price. In other words, the shares are fully paid for, in which case the adjustment factor is zero and the options are not dilutive. Those two probably absurd extreme examples are a good way of getting your mind around exactly what that adjustment process is.